Well, since you guys love this backhoe series so much, I think I'm going to dig into it right now before the weather gets too cold. It's like in the 40s right now, and it's probably going to rain and snow this weekend. So, where we're at, if you saw the last video, we did break the engine free. It took me about a year, over a year, to break it free. I used a bunch of different solvents in there and different methods. And finally, we got it. So, at this point, um, since I'm already torn down to the head, and the head is off, we're going to redo everything. It's the right thing to do. I've been hung up on this for a while. I'd love to just slap it back together right now, but because this is a deck cylinder engine, all the um, cylinders are attached to a top deck. We're going to have to take that thing out and make sure it's flat, or else we're just going to blow head gaskets all the time, or possibly leak water into the oil in the engine. So what we got to do is pop all those pistons out. And the first one is the one that was stuck the one that was rusted in, um, that's the one that's going to give us some problems tapping them out. So I'm going to go underneath, drain the oil, pop that lower oil pan off again, and pop the pistons up to the top. And then once I get them, you know, hopefully I can do it without taking out the crankshaft because to do that I have to split the tractor and I'm trying to avoid that. So we're going to pop the oil pan off, try to pop the pistons up. I think I can tap them with a piece of wood. Once those are out, this top deck will come off. We'll assess if it's warped at all. If it is, we're gonna machine it. If not, uh, we'll clean it all up, probably put new rings in the pistons and put it all back together with new gaskets. So it's cold. I really don't feel like laying under this thing, but I need to get it running. So let's drain the oil, it's easy. The pan is super heavy. I gotta use a jack to get it off. Let's get started. Well, hopefully you guys can see that. It's been so long since I worked on this. I gotta get it going though, or else I should just wrap it. These are metric sockets. I don't have any American ones big enough. But I shouldn't have put this on there that tight hopefully. Again, that was like a year ago so this looks pretty close. Yeah, that was loose. Alright, let's see what comes out because I just put sort of whatever oil I had laying around. It's definitely gotten rained on since. So hopefully it looks clean. Not too much water. Oh yeah, it's all automatic transmission fluid. <laughs> I forgot because I obviously filled it up. Oh, why is it not draining? No! So it's mostly PB Blaster and automatic transmission fluid. Because uh, that's what I put in there. Oh, I almost overflowed the pan there. Yeah, it smells like brake fluid, automatic transmission fluid, all the all the good stuff all the good stuff okay we're probably good enough now there's definitely a lot of automatic transmission fluid in here but yeah that's what you get probably cleaned out the engine pretty good so we'll let that drip a little bit and then we'll start pulling these uh 916 bolts out there's a ton of them and this pan is super heavy so we're gonna get a jack stand a little bit of water okay we let that drip for a little bit Put the plug back in, start cracking these bottom bolts off. <laughs> Tighten it now so I don't forget. Give you guys a light. Yeah. That's all the 916, so I need just a bigger ratchet. There's a couple of three quarters and five eighths, it looks like. So. Back.
drop it. Okay, so I'm trying to avoid getting transmission fluid that I put in here dropped on my face, but you could tell, I have a video of this earlier, but look how, how clean this looks. Crankshaft, super heavy duty. Not too concerned about any of this. My plan is to unbolt the rod bearings right there, right there, right there, and then tap the piston up. Some of them look, I mean, when they're in the lower position, it looks easy. But when they're in the upper position, there's kind of like a lot of, like the crankshaft's in the way. So I think I have it, I do have it in neutral right now. I'm gonna have to figure out if I can rotate the crankshaft. So I think we'll just start right in. So I'm gonna crack those loose, those um, rod bearing nuts, and make sure I label them. I'm gonna, actually you might have to change those, but regardless, I'm gonna label them where they came from. Same with the caps. Uh, the rod bearing caps. Yeah, we'll see if we can tap a piston out. I have no idea how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna freaking do it. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to tap the piston out. Once I crack all the rods loose, I could pull the whole deck out, the whole top deck, and then tap the pistons out on the ground, yeah. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Oh, and I don't know if you're, you have to do this, but I'm gonna try to unloosen like the front one and then the rear one, you know, the middle two, so that it doesn't warp the crank. I doubt that is the case with this engine, but it makes me feel better, so. So if I had to guess, that's a 9 16 let's see. I could probably crack that one right now. I keep telling myself that because it's been so long with this engine, you start to get like fatigue. You don't wanna work on it because you know how much of a pain it is. And then you just don't, and then it never gets done. Okay, I need an extension. Oh, they're pretty tight. Oh, they're really tight. I'm gonna need a bar. That's tight. I wonder what the torque is on that. Did I just strip it? I'm gonna cry if I did. I guess I could use an impact. I don't want to though. Okay, I got that. A little bit there, a little bit here. Try and just tap it with a wrench, maybe it'll pop this. Marking again. Okay, this should be able to tell. I'm going to record this on camera. This is the direction it came down. The marking is on the passenger side, the left side from laying under the engine. All right, I think we're gonna try to lift the head off the top now. All right, so we just got all the bearings off. Grab my light, I'll show you guys. It's getting pretty cold, but the crankshaft journals look pretty good. Oh, that's why that one looked weird, it's got the ring stuck on it still does that one look like it's oh that one's got some damages of course the one that stuck on there i'll show you guys these inside better in the light but this is number three. Oh yeah i can feel it how's the crank ah the crank has a little wipe on it 
And the trick is to see if you can drag your nail across it. You can feel it a little bit. Okay, that sucks. I'm gonna have to look at that in the morning. But regardless, I don't think I'm gonna send this crank out. All right. So it's dark out now, typical. Let's see if I can get some light here. Okay, it's a lot of light. We just got the crank thrown off, so now we're gonna try to pull this top, top plate off. So I'm gonna undo my two temporary bolts and we'll try to pull the whole thing out with the pistons. It's gonna be heavy, but I think that's our best. reason I did that and the whole reason this took me so long is this gasket here I need to change because I broke the seal um, when I was trying to break the engine free and I think um, that was all water the water jacket there so I'm gonna spray some WD-40 on the cranks it looks like number three journal bearings stuck to it as well we'll pop that off and then I can work inside and start to look at this stuff because it's getting cold that gasket was the whole reason I tore it all off because this engine doesn't have individual cylinder liners, it has that deck plate. And that deck plate is the whole problem with this, which is why people don't like these engines because there's two gaskets that could fail. So, and the head could warp and a bunch of other stuff. So, okay, sweet. I'm gonna clean up all these tools and we'll go in the shop and check out um, what the heck's going on with pistons, see if we can pop those pistons out. So I think it'll be easier doing it on a jig, put it on some blocks. So. Okay, so I pulled the upper journal off and the bottom was a little messed up. And yep, look, it, uh, it wiped a little bit there. It's not much, but you can see that there was definitely something embedded. But that's what these are designed to do. This is Babbitt. This is a Babbitt bearing journal. And the oil film that you put the oil in your engine rides between here and the crankshaft. Um, so it's spinning on oil. Uh, if you didn't know that. Um, I'm going to see if I can buy these. They're probably expensive for this machine. Hopefully not. Um, there's a trick to where if like the top is bad and the bottom is not, you can like rotate them. Vice versa. This one's bad enough that I think I'm going to change it. I'm going to have to get like the crush washer or the crush, um, uh, whatever it's called, to check the gaps. But anyways, look, I got Permatex Ultra Slick. This is for... Uh, this is assembly lube, but I'm going to put a little bit on each of these now so they don't flash rust because this is sitting outside, unfortunately. It's not covered. So I'm going to wipe that around and then, uh, yeah, take it inside and show you some of that. Guys, yeah, so we're going to try to pop these pistons out of the backhoe engine. This is called a cylinder deck. It's different than other tractors because it doesn't have individual liners in the block. This is like the cooling area. This is like the water jacket. So all the cooling water passes between this sleeve, this cylinder sleeve, and the block. Um, so there is a seal right here. I think they're on the block still. I'm going to have to pull those out, but they did seal. I was worried about those breaking as well as this seal up here. So this is the one we are having trouble with. Oh, I left a dowel in the engine block. No, no. It was this one. This is the one we're having trouble with. This is number one because of this dowel. So I'm going to try to pop them out in the path of least resistance. So I'll pop these two down and try to pop these two up. I might have to put the cap on the bearing. Jeez, he's already kind of rusted. I'm going to have to wipe this down. We got it. Wow, this thing has lots of rings. Check it out. We're doing this because we're probably going to, I mean, I want to clean everything, but we're going to hone the, oh, there's a little ring ridge there. I can feel it with my finger. We're going to hone these cylinders while we have it this far apart because we have to change this gasket. Oh, I'm going to have to think about that one a little bit. So I'm in the middle of getting another project done, but this just came in with Rolock bristle um, cleaner. I love how that opens up. Let me try slow mo. It. Up the head on this um, John Deere block, but heck, let's give this uh, thing a try. 
try to clean this surface up. Wow, it's almost like it's too fast. Let's try two. It's wearing, but it's not too bad. That does okay on the rust. Not super heavy. I think it's better to remove scaling and stuff, so I don't want to drop this. We'll pick back up on this later. I'm going to try to bash this piston out. But you can see the light might have been kind of harsh. I only did the top side, but it polishes real nice. Except I burned through a whole battery just doing that. So that's that's crazy. If it goes through batteries that fast, I'll need to get the bigger pack. These all need cleaned and honed and blah. So we'll pop that out later. I'm gonna I finally found my torch. So we'll try that first and then hopefully we don't have to go to the oxyacetylene. But uh alright, stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna pop this piston out of here finally. I think this ideal setup is something like this. this works we'll uh, spray some lube in here hopefully it eats that up as it goes down it's still really tight but block of wood a couple of wood blocks here all right we're gonna continue as far as this will go Didn't move an inch. All right, back to the press now. This time, I think we're gonna set it on the head. I think we have to. Okay, back here. Got my bag set up to catch the piston. And I'm gonna try to do it. Problem is I can't get it centered. I have to build a jig. I'm just gonna try to put the press over here. I could try actually cockeying the press. That might work. Let me try that. Gonna have to build like two sides out of wood to get it uh, sideways. 
to think about that one. All right, I'm feeling optimistic today. Made this new jig so that I can press that piston out the back of. I got uh, two by eights on the side, clamp across them. I'm gonna throw another block in there to get my height set. I could move this up a pin, but we're gonna try this for now. It just needs a little bit more, and then we have this bag to catch it. You guys might be witnessing history here. Let's give this a shot. I'm going to back this off for you. Add another push block. Make sure I'm centered. And check underneath. Make sure I'm not going to hit the base, which I'm not. If I'm pressing wood. Make sure I'm clear down here. Yep, feel clear. Clamps are pretty tight. Uh, but also spraying lube in there to see if it creep. Yeah, I need to get some hardwood. Oh, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. At this point, I don't even care if I break the piston. I just need it out. Buy a new one. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Should use heat. She's done now, boys. The back hair is done. All right, let's inspect the damage. I'm pretty bummed. That was uh, at least a $500 mistake, possibly a $1,500 mistake, which means bye-bye tractor. That piss, I, I don't understand. It doesn't even look like it was going sideways maybe a hair I should have used heat I mean it's totally my fault I should have heated this up look at that there's there's no fixing this this is um, cast it would have to be perfectly lined up and if it's a little cockeyed uh, you're gonna you're gonna wreck your crankshaft. So it's it's toast. All right. Two years down the drain, right there. So life lessons you learn. Yeah, I think I was going a little bit sideways on it. This side's a little bit longer. But that's, it's just insane, like, that bore should allow that. Alright, I'm gonna stop now. Hey, what's up guys? Hope you uh, enjoyed watching that video. It was a little bit heartbreaking for me at the end there to sort of watch that happen again. But uh, if you follow me on Instagram, there is good news at the end of this. I hope uh, we're getting there. Uh, but, um, yeah, definitely please subscribe, um, uh, to my channel. And if you really like this video, throw me a thumbs up and, uh, just stick around. We got a lot more videos coming, a bunch of projects. So happy to have you guys here and, uh, thanks for watching.